My name is Lee Huang Roberts. I am the second year fellow of FPMRS at Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oak, Michigan. Earlier in the pandemic years, we found out that there are patients who are reporting worsening or new overactive bladder symptoms. And so we decided to investigate this. Um, and so our, the way that we designed the study is both a retrospective and a prospective uh, formula. So for this abstract, we are reporting more of the retrospective information where we ask patients to rate their symptoms of OAB per the ICIQ OAB questionnaire uh, at before the time of the pandemic in January 2020, before it hit the US. At the time of the study, which was May 2021, and then also if they were diagnosed with COVID infection at any time in between those two time points to rate their symptoms two months afterwards to see if we can capture some of their OAB symptoms. From what we found out is that comparing patients that never had COVID, either based on serology um, information or from a PCR uh, positivity, we found that patients were three times more likely to have worsening or de novo OAB symptoms after a COVID infection. So the BLAST COVID study group is one of the largest serology studies that looked at the asymptomatic infection rate of COVID amongst healthcare employees. It was done here by Dr. Sims um, at Beaumont Hospital. And what he did was he invited all 43,000 employees of the healthcare uh, system here and about 20,000 participated. And what he was able to collect are both demographic and clinical information as well as serology information. So he asked patients to uh, have serial collections of their blood uh, at every two to four weeks. Um, and from this, we were able to tap it into a wealth of information with him. So we use the ICIQ OAB, which is a grade A validated questionnaire that evaluates four domains frequency, urgency, nocturia, and urgent continence. The beauty of this questionnaire is that it evaluates both symptom severity and bother score and also has a minimum important difference of one. So we were able to capture exactly what was clinically significant to the patient. Now we asked the patients to rate their OAB scores at two to three time points, meaning we asked them to rate it before the pandemic hit US, so in January 2020, and then also at the time of study, so May 2021. Now, if they were ever diagnosed with COVID, we asked them to evaluate one more time two months after their infection. Now, limitation of this is, of course, it's a retrospective form. However, we do have a very uh, clinically uh, intelligent population of healthcare workers who understand exactly what these questions are asking. So that's the, the strength of this methodology. So currently we don't know the exact mechanism and it's actually a area of active research for us, but from the extensive knowledge of Dr. Michael Chancellor and Dr. Kenneth Peters in interstitial cystitis, we do have a few hypotheses. Uh, first of all is, of course, the inflammation, the indirect pathophysiology of the inflammation and the cytokine storm. We know that from other viral etiologies such as adenovirus or BK virus or Epstein-Barr virus that causes urological symptoms such as IC or hemorrhagic cystitis, the cytokines or the pro-inflammatory markers are very important in the pathophysiology of those uh, conditions. So we hypothesize that perhaps it's very similar. Now, COVID is interesting in that it does create a hypercoagulability uh, that can cause microthrombi. We've seen that this does affect other systems such as the heart. So perhaps there's a similar mechanism in the bladder, um, but this is again an area of active research for us. 
So we currently don't know exactly how long CAC lasts. However, part of our study has a prospective component which we're following these patients for up to two years. So we will um, absolutely let you know. However, anecdotally, we are seeing that patients are reporting improvement of their symptoms uh, within a week, month or two. Uh, but again, we will hopefully confirm this with our prospective component. Because COVID-associated cystitis is such a newly identified condition by Dr. Lam and Dr. Chancellor here at Beaumont, well, there's many things we want to answer, such as what is the pathophysiology? What is the natural progression of this disease? Does it respond to medications such as anticholinergics or beta-3 agonists versus does it respond better to uh, Botox injections or neuromodulation? All great things that we're actively pursuing right now.